Let us remain standing for the entrance of their excellencies, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack and Mrs. Julita Snack. now have the national anthem played by the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band. <laughs> Now call on Father C Cecil Goodman, who will lead us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us begin our prayer with a quotation from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, which says, Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap the harvest. End of quotation. Father, we believe that you call all peoples to the universal virtues of love and service. And we acknowledge too that it is by grace that you have called, called and inspired those gathered here who are to receive awards to the same standards of love and selfless service which they have displayed to our people and our country. Father, bless them for their work and service. May their example and the award they, and the, the award they receive today inspire others, especially the youth of St. Lucia, to emulate them 
in the work they have done in spreading good virtues spiritually, socially, and culturally to uplift our people and country. Father, we ask your blessings for their families and for all who have supported them in their work and service. We ask your blessings also on all here present and those unable to attend the investiture ceremony. In a special way, we pray for a blessing on our Honorable Prime Minister and his colleagues for their graciousness in recognizing the merits of those who have served and are today being honored. We pray a blessing for His Excellency the Governor General who desire to serve the country has remained undeemed from youth to the present time. May the Lord grant him health and strength to carry on successfully the duties of state and the affairs of the people. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You may sit. Governor General of St. Lucia, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, former Governor General of St. Lucia, Her Excellency Dame Paulet Louise, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band, recipients, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Miss Louise Phillip, and it is indeed my pleasure to take you through the proceedings for this afternoon's ceremony. At this moment, I call on Mrs. Mauricia Thomas Francis, the chairperson of our National Awards Committee who will deliver our opening remarks. Let us put our hands together to welcome Mrs. Francis. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to adopt the protocol that has just been established. But I would just like to add Good afternoon and a warm welcome to each and every one of you here today. I wish to especially recognize and warmly welcome our new Governor General, His Excellency Sir Neville and Lady Snack, to their first National Awards Ceremony since their appointment. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending a resounding round of applause in congratulation to them and to extend best wishes for the highest success in the new role. Ladies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I also feel duty bound to especially recognize the presence of our iconic former Governor General, Dame Paulette Louise, in so doing. I am mindful that it is the first time in 20 years since she will not be presiding over these proceedings. In today's spirit of national recognition, I am taking the liberty to thank her for her service to St. Lucia, a service marked by distinction, poise, humility, dignity, to name a few of her many achievements in the role. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving Dame Paulette Louise the type of resounding standing ovation which she so rightly deserves.
In my capacity as chair of the National Awards Committee, it gives me immense pleasure to address you on this auspicious occasion. As we are all aware, this event has been one of the highlights of our independence celebration ever since its introduction via statute to it, National Honors and Award Act No. 1 of 2000, which has been enforced since 22nd February 2000 and the subsequent revision of 2008. The Act provides for the grant of awards to citizens of St. Lucia and other persons of the distinguished, outstanding, or meritorious services or achievements uh, in relation to St. Lucia and beyond. Over the years, several deserving sons and daughters of our soil have been commemorated for their contributions to various areas of national development. Persons of all ages, professions, vocations, and all walks of life have been so honored. And while today's gathering is part of that custom, it is even more significant that such recognition is bestowed on individuals and civil society in today's world, where populism and insularity are being touted from high office and offend for yourself kind of doctrine is proliferating our families. We should be reminded now, more than ever before, that we must not slumber while our neighbor's house is on fire. Certainly, it cannot be said that today's honorees have slumbered. Today, therefore, is indeed an opportunity to remind ourselves that uh, there are real people behind the great things that are happening in our country. People who rise up to help when the community needs them. People who go way beyond the call of duty to serve by using their God-given talent to improve their lives, that of their families, and the entire community. These are the qualities our honorees who are here today represent and those before them. So I therefore implore you to view today's proceedings as more than a ritualistic event. 39 years of nationhood is no small accomplishment in the context of our Caribbean states. And if one were to reflect on the contributions of past nominees, collectively and individually, and indeed those being conferred today, I am sure you would conclude, conclude that there would be no nationhood no sustainable development without human capital, and more specifically, the collective passion, talents, dedication to service above self and preservation of our citizens. Awards do not only acknowledge success, they recognize many other qualities, ability, struggle, effort, and sacrifice. They are a way through which we can encourage and reward good behavior, sound discipline, and patriotism in addition to providing inspiration, encouragement, hope, and aspiration to other members of the citizenry. Awards are meant in simplistic terms to convey a simple message. If I can do it, you can do it also, and better and together we can all continue to grow and prosper. Mahatma Gandhi put service in context when he said, and I quote, service, service which is rendered without joy helps neither the servant nor the served, but all other pleasures and possessions pale into nothingness before service which is rendered in a spirit of joy, unquote. In reviewing the generous service provided by our awardees, I can attest to the joy derived from the service provided. Indeed, the National Independence Award Program was conceptualized and designed to show appreciation for excellence, for distinction, and compassion in the line of duty, acts of bravery for lifetime achievement for years of selfless community work, volunteerism, 
all aimed at developing stronger communities and a better St. Lucia socially and economically. For this reason, we must continuously recognize, nurture, support, and celebrate those am among us who have committed to a life of service beyond self, thus creating national value for the greater good. Whether such recognitions are done formally in the workplace or otherwise, we cannot dispute the significance of the goodwill that such acts generate. The first and most important step in the process of the, sub, of the process of the nominations, the process of the national awards nomination process, is of course the submission of nominations. And I wish to take this opportunity on behalf of the nominations committee to thank all citizens who made it their duty to seek out and recommend our deserving brothers and sisters for special rec recognition. Special appreciation goes to those who ensured that the deadline date of submission was met and the quality of submissions was superior. Without your efforts, we would not have been here today. Let us give our, the persons who did the nominations a resounding round of applause, okay, it takes effort and time to do so. Thank you. Our role as a committee, simplistic as it may appear, was not easy. We embarked on island-wide road shows to sensitize the population and ultimately to ensure that nominations were fully representative. This first resulted in a significantly high number of nominations in all categories, comparatively speaking. In that regard, we must, we must share that out of the many nominations received this year, there were many more qualifying ones which we were not able to consider due to inherent constraints, chief of which is the limited quotas established under each category of award which the committee was bound to comply with. As normal, with all thrust of a competitive nature, there will be the expectation that everyone who submitted a nomination will desire to win. Essentially, everyone who was nominated for an award must be commended highly. And while today's spotlight is on our awardees who top the respective categories, we invite you to give a resounding round of applause to all nominees of 2018 for indeed, the fact that they were nominated render them winners in their own rights. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. I would like to also use this platform to advise citizens that there is the opportunity to resubmit nominations for consideration next year in respect of those nominees who did not make it in this round. So we are looking forward to receiving resubmission of some of the nominations that were not, we were not able to consider this year. On the question of criteria and quota, the committee is of the view that it is opportune for possible revision of the structure and criteria of the award scheme as set out under the Act. And as a committee, we intend to make some recommendations which we hope will be considered. On this note, I am reminded of CNN Heroes program themed everyday people doing extraordinary things to change the world, which chronicles the efforts of everyday people who change the world for the better and highlight and reward these global heroes in a tangible way. This CNN Heroes program is inspiring and tangible. So, in reflecting on such a program, I am thinking, how about introducing a segment? Everyday citizens doing extraordinary things to, say, to change St. Lucia, as under the category. Nominations can include supportive references from religious leaders, social groups, community groups, etc and perhaps an electronic voting element for greater community involvement, objectivity, and the like, since we are talking about an era of global technology. If considered, 
The timing of these changes will be appropriate as next year we will be celebrating a milestone, 40 years of independence, which should bear even greater significance for us as a country. It will be an opportune time, we believe, to shift gears and focus on how we should define I am St. Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, I must shift my attention to our guests of honor, today's awardees, our heroes. Today's spotlight is on each and every one of you. Today, St. Lucia honors you and shows our profound appreciation for your excellence, for your dedication, for your compassion. And we acknowledge that extraordinary achievements often come at great sacrifice. As human beings, we seem to have an infinite capacity for thinking that most things just happen. And we forget that worthwhile achievements take time, dedication, and effort, and that true excellence comes from that. I am sure that our awardees here today know that. We know how hard, how hard you have worked. You know the effort that you made, which will always stay with you and will mark you forever and indeed the lives that are enhanced through your efforts and your hard work. It was Steve Jobs who said, and I quote, we don't get a chance to do that many things and everyone should be really excellent because this is our life, unquote. Your achievement reflects strong patriotism, awardees. Dedication for the country's upliftment, among other things, is the key spirit in being a patriot. Patriotism teaches us to love our country and embrace the whole humanity. It enlightens the people about their predominant duties towards nation building, and it is the actual spirit that seeks accomplishment through supreme sacrifice for the country and enable us to step forward to do our bit to contribute contribute towards the collective good. It is our hope that your achievements and contributions will encourage others to follow suit, to give of their time, resources, expertise, and to continue to improve the social and economic lives of our beautiful country. Award is today. Whether you are being honored for a lifetime of achievement in your specific fields, in, for years of volunteer work, or for a moment of bravery, your actions speak volumes about what it truly means to be St. Lucian. Your actions and achievements add up to something extremely important to our country, for, for Saint, our country, St. Lucia. Keep motivated and be mindful not to allow your success to defeat your drive. You have earned the right to boast and shout from the top of Mount Jimmy that I am St. Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give all our awardees, our heroes, our resounding round of applause this afternoon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you we salute you, we congratulate you, we celebrate you, and we are deeply grateful as citizens for the inval invaluable contribution to making St. Lucia a better place to live and enjoy. In closing, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the efforts, input, and contribution of a number of persons. On behalf of the awards committee, I would like to take this opportunity to thank firstly the almighty God for bringing all of us here safely today and for all his blessings and favors granted to this beautiful nation of ours. I'd also like to thank our former Governor General, Dame Paulet Luizzi, and the Prime Minister for the confidence reposed in the awards committee to serve at such a prestigious level and entrusting us with this important mandate. Our appreciation also goes to everyone who, has in who was involved in the process which has culminated, culminated sorry, in this beautiful event today. Last but not least, please allow me to use the opportunity to express my sincere thankfulness to my team, the illustrious member 
of our awards committee who worked tirelessly to fulfill their duties with distinction. Can I please ask committee members to stand and I, as I introduce each and every one of you. Mr. Wilbert King, representing the Public Service and Teaching Service Commission. Unfortunately, he's not here today. I think he's attending another event of equal national import, but I think we need to give him a resounding round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Severin Mosheri, Commissioner of Police. <laughs> Solicitor Love Leslie Mondesi, who is representing the parliamentary opposition. <laughs> Mr. Gregory Sejo. and our illustrious Deputy PS in the office of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Irene Senkwa. <laughs> Lady and gentlemen, do take a much deserved bow and huge thanks for your sterling contribution and support. Please join me once again in giving them a resounding round of applause. Great job. In conclusion, I now invite you to enjoy the rest of the proceedings and to reflect your appreciation in the most resounding way as each of our heroes receive their much deserved accolades from His Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention and for the opportunity to address you. Profoundly yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Francis, for your very informative and well-delivered opening remarks. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together to show our appreciation. At this moment, help me welcome the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band as they entertain us with a musical rendition. Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands to welcome the members.
by the tapping of feet, the nodding of heads, and the smiles on your faces, I can tell that just like me, ladies and gentlemen, you enjoyed the musical rendition. Great job, Le gentlemen. Let us put our hands together once again for such a great musical rendition. And of course, the moment that we are here for. I would like to call on Ms. Alexander, the Secretary to the Order, as well as Mrs. Natalie Jolie Fannis and Dr. Kathy Depradine, who will take us through the first half of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together to welcome the ladies. His Excellency, the Governor General, as Chancellor of the National Societies of Honor, and in accordance with the provisions of Section 25 of the National Honors and Awards Act, has been pleased to make the following appointments. The St. Lucia Cross, Dr. Joseph M. Skoremi, for distinguished service in the field of medicine and community service. Mr. Peter Dolora, Honorary, for distinguished service in the field of tourism. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold, Mr. Paul Butler, for eminent service of national importance in the field of agriculture. Mrs. Teresa Laurie Collimore, for eminent service of national importance in the field of dance. Sister Marie Claire Joseph, for distinguished service in the field of education and community service. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver, Mrs. Pamela Mary DeVoe, for eminent service of national importance in the field of community service. Mr. Kaylin Henry, for eminent service of national importance in the field of health service. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold, Mr. Graham Augustus Gard, for long and meritorious service in the field of music. Mr. Arthur Leandre Fedav Jacobs, for long and meritorious service in the arts. Mrs. June Allison Christine Frederick, for long and meritorious service in the field of culture. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver, Mr. Rupert Joseph Branford, for long and meritorious service in the field of sports. Mrs. Rosemary Anastasia Etienne Paris, for long and meritorious service in the arts. Mr. Innocent Amab, for long and meritorious service in the arts. The St. Lucia Lepitor Medal Gold, Ms. Catherine Francis, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of education and community service. Mr. Felix St. Rose, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of sports. Mr. Greenage Hippolyte, for having performed long and meritorious service in national welfare and community service. The St. Lucia Lepitor Medal Silver, Mr. Nicholson Rufus George, for long and meritorious service in the field of community service. Ms. Praxid Kade, for having performed long and meritorious service to St. Lucia, tending to promote loyal public service in the arts. Ms. Lucilla Flores Vidal Jules, for having performed long and meritorious service in national welfare and community service. The St. Lucia Lepitor Medal Bronze, Mr. Gio. Mr. Greenwich Giovanni Moses, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of music and community service. Mrs. Rosemary Monica Compton, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of community service. Mr. Alan Joshua Hippolyte, for having performed long and meritorious service in the field of sports. National Service Cross, Mr. John Milton Daisy, for loyal and devoted service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Mr. Eric Irvin Thompson, for loyal and devoted service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The National Service Medal, Mr. Martin Adolphus Herbert, for outstanding and mer meritorious service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Mr. Prudence Robinson, for outstanding and meritorious service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The St. Lucia Cross, 
Honorable Dr. Joseph Emsko Remy for distinguished service in the field of medicine and community service. Dr. Joseph M. Skoremi, one of Labry's distinguished sons, began his service in the field of medicine in St. Lucia in 1977. In his early years, he worked in primary health care sector as a district medical officer from his home base in the South, and then in his latter years in the secondary and tertiary sectors. As a general practitioner, he served in public clinics and at St. Jude Hospital and initiated public lectures and discussions on common health problems. He established, he helped establish the family planning clinics in the Southern Districts, the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, and the Nurse Practitioner Program in the Windward Islands. This latter program has endured and continues to play a meaningful role in our community health program. But it is perhaps in the field of ophthalmology that Dr. Remy has made his most significant contribution. His induction into ophthalmology took place in 1982 when he was one of a team of doctors from Harvard University that would become the first in the English-speaking Caribbean to insert intraocular lenses in the eyes during cataract extraction. Following a full residency at the Hebrew University in Israel, he returned to St. Lucia in 1987 to become the first and only ophthalmologist in the island. His base was the Victoria Hospital, where he remained the only one in that field for 19 years until his retirement. Under his tutelage and direction, the eye department at Victoria Hospital was established the department continues to function to this day, a testament to his commitment and his contribution. Dr. Remy is a founding and a current member of the Ophthalmologist Society of the West Indies and a senior active member of the American Academy of Ophthalmology. Since his retirement, he has continued to provide the full range of eye care to the paying public in his private offices in the north and south of the island. Dr. Remy has served as the president of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association and as the first chairman of Tapio Hospital, of which he is a founding member. His service to the St. Lucian community has not been confined to the medical field. He has served as St. Lucia's deputy to the Governor General, as a member of the Rotary Club of St. Lucia South, a member of the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School Board, a founding member of Paragon Club, a founding member of the St. John's Ambulance Brigade, a member of the Vidbutai Cultural Club, to name but a few. For his many years of distinguished and eminent contribution to national development, Dr. Joseph Emsko Remy is being awarded the St. Lucia Cross. The St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold, Mr. Paul Butler, for eminent service of national importance in the field of agriculture. Mr. Paul Butler was born in London in the United Kingdom and studied ecology and conservation at the Northeast London Polytechnic. It was while at the university that he and four friends put together a research expedition to St. Lucia to study the St. Lucia parrot. This expedition was endorsed by the forestry department and funded by Geest Industries, Minville and Chastney, and Monarch Airlines. Butler and his team spent a month on the island trying to assess the parrot's dwindling population. In 1978, 
Mr. Butler was invited back to St. Lucia by Mr. Gabriel Coco Charles, the then forestry supervisor, to be the conservation advisor to the forestry division. He had the responsibility to implement a series of recommendations that he had put forward to, ensure, to help ensure the St. Lucia parrot did not slip into extinction. He established a parrot sanctuary in the Central Forest Reserve, registered all existing captive parrots, helped revise the Wildlife Protection Act, established a rainforest walk to raise funds for conservation, and begun an outreach program that would carry the conservation message through posters, billboards, songs, sermons, costumes, and puppets into every corner of the island. The parrot's population grew to over 1,000 and was then declared St. Lucia's national bird. For 10 years of exemplary and distinguished service of national importance to St. Lucia, Mr. Paul Butler is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Gold. Mr. Butler could not be here with us, but Mr. Alan Regis is accepting on his behalf. <laughs> Mr. Butler has sent a thank you message which reads, I am very sorry that I cannot be with you today, but I had prior travel commitments which I could not change. It is an enormous honor and a privilege to be the recipient of this prestigious award. In the 1970s, scientists predicted that the endemic St. Lucia parrot, de Jaco, was likely to become extinct by the year 2000. Yet thanks to the commitment of St. Lucians from all walks of life, we can still see this unique bird in its forest home. The parrot and St. Lucia's other plants and animals are living symbols of what I believe to be the most beautiful place on earth. The 25 years that I lived here are the happiest of my life. Working with Gabriel Charles and the dedicated staff of the forestry department shaped my career, and the approach of building pride in a nation's natural heritage has since been replicated in over 50 countries around the world to great effect. I am enormously proud of this Medal of Honor and want to sincerely thank the nominator and the awards committee, as well as the Office of the Governor General. St. Lucia will forever be in my heart. The next awardee for the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold is Mrs. Teresa Laurie Collimore for eminent service of national importance in the field of dance. Mrs. Teresa Laurie Collimore is the founder and dance director of the St. Lucia School of Ballet and Modern Dance, which was established in 1979. She has undertaken many teaching refresher courses over the years to ensure that she keeps herself well in tuned and current in all aspects of dance teaching. In 2002, she expanded her teaching portfolio from classical ballet to encompass modern theater dance and in 2001 began offering tap. Upon opening a studio at her residence in Balata in 2004, she sponsored a year's study in modern dance for 40 young persons from the community. In 2008-2009, she offered adult dance classes at the Cultural Development Foundation in Castries, and from 2010 to 2012, volunteered to teach modern dance at the Bordelais Correctional Facility. Mrs. Collimore has directed many dance productions, including the St. Lucia's 30th Independence Celebrations, Esperos, Hope of a Nation. She teaches dance to all ages and currently has seven studios around the island. For the generous contribution of her time and expertise in the arts and field of dance, Mrs. Teresa Laurie Collimore is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Gold.
Round of applause. Sister Marie Claire Joseph. For distinguished service in the field of education. Sister Claire was born in Trinidad and grew up in a practicing Roman Catholic family. She started her teaching career in 1954 and entered the Sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny in 1958. She later received a scholarship to St. Francis Xavier University, Nova Scotia, where she did a bachelor's degree in music, majoring in voice. In September 1973, Sister Claire was assigned to St. Lucia, where she taught English, literature, and art at the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School. In 1981, she read for her master's in education at the University of Birmingham, UK, and upon her return, was appointed principal of the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School until her retirement in 1999. Perhaps one of her greatest achievements at the school was her pet project, the establishment of the SJC, SJC Steel, complete with band room and other instruments. Throughout her career as an educator, she went beyond the call of duty to look after the educational, emotional, and spiritual well-being of the students entrusted to her care. She also volunteered her time, services, and skills to the church, serving on the vocation and liturgical commissions, and in education, on committees for the implementation of the CXC and common entrance examinations. She served as the secretary to the National Principals Association from 1982 to 1998. Post-retirement, she continues to serve and took up the leadership of the convent preschool in 2008, a position she still occupies. For her contribution to education and religion, Sister Mary Claire Joseph is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold. We move on to the St. Lucia Medal of Honor, Silver. And our first recipient, Mrs. Pamela DeVoe. For eminent service of national importance to St. Lucia. Pamela DeVoe was born in Surrey, England and moved to St. Lucia with her husband, Robert DeVoe in 1967. She worked briefly with Sir Garnet Gordon at Geist Industries, and then spent the next three decades working at Sunbuilt. She was a quintessential woman, supporting her husband in his labor of love and service to country. While holding down a full-time job, she took care of the household financially, allowing Robert to work without a salary to get the National Trust off the ground. She also assisted him in the typing of letters and documents. She quietly put up with the appropriation of her dining room table for sorting salvaged records, cleaning artifacts, and soaking stamps. She typed the manuscripts for all of Robert's books and articles and stood beside him at every function and award ceremony. Pam, as she's affectionately known, was a founding member of the St. Lucia Animal Protection Society, SLAPS, and became the president in 2003. She worked tirelessly to improve the plight of abandoned, neglected, and abused animals in St. Lucia. Under her leadership, thousands of dogs and cats that would otherwise have been left to reproduce have been spayed or neutered, and thousands of rescued animals have been adopted into homes. 
SLAPS operates entirely on the proceeds from donations, subscriptions, and fundraisers. For the generous contribution of her time and dedicated service to the people and animals of St. Lucia, Mrs. Pamela DeVoe is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver. Mr. Kalen Henry, for eminent service of national importance in the field of health. <laughs> Mr. Kalen Henry is a biomedical technician attached to the Victoria Hospital. Initially, his daily routine involved the maintenance of nebulizers, sterilization, and other equipment at the labs and emergency and intensive care units. However, most of his time over the last few years has been spent guaranteeing the running of our aged dialysis machines. Mr. Henry is a very caring, humble, selfless, and competent individual who goes above and beyond the call of duty in ensuring that those machines are up and running and never leaves the compound until every patient has been dialyzed. Thanks in large part to his effort, patients can now be safely and comfortably dialyzed in their beds in the intensive care unit and no longer have to make the long downhill trek to the renal unit. Every dialysis nurse and physician has Mr. Henry's number on speed dial because without him, dialysis would not be possible. For continuous devotion and dedication to the technical department of Victoria Hospital and for his humane and selfless contribution to the functioning of the, the renal unit, Mr. Kalen Henry is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Silver. We move to the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. Mr. Graham Augustus Gard. For long and meritorious service in the field of music. Mr. Graham Gard has been described as a living musical legend. His passion and talent in the field of music was recognized by his family and neighbors in Central Castries, who encouraged him while he was still very young by donating instruments such as the xylophone, the ukulele, and the guitar so that he could practice his craft and hone his skill. That encouragement paid off handsomely. His professional career took off when he joined the Quavers Band led by Rudolf Toto Charles. He would move on to join the True Tones with Boo Hingson, and then on to the very creative Chapter 8. On, on leaving the short-lived Chapter 8, Mr. Gard decided to go solo, performing as a one-man band. He became a sensation as he was the first musician to play multiple instruments during a performance. He can thus be regarded as a pioneer in what is now becoming very vogue with musicians who now have the benefit of modern technology. Mr. Gard currently performs in the hotel circuit with a repertoire of original, jazz, reggae, calypso, standards, and ballads, and makes time to train younger musicians in the areas of arranging and other technical aspects of the art. He has invested more than half a century in the development of St. Lucia's music industry and laments the fact that in spite of his efforts, the country has not been able to establish a musician's union. For his significant contribution to the development of the music industry here at home, Mr. Gard is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold.
Mr. Arthur Leander Fidave Jacobs for long and meritorious service in the arts. Mr. Arthur Leander Fidave Jacobs, or Jakes, as he became affectionately known, Mr. Arthur Leander Fedev Jacobs, or Jakes, as he became affectionately known, has been described as a blend of humility and passion, an artist in the truest sense of the word, concerned less with his accolades and awards and more with the art itself. His focus remains on being true to the creative springs that well within him, being responsive to what needs to be said and heard and felt, and simply being honored to have contributed in his own way to good art. As a young man, his love for the creative arts was evident, and he became a self-taught craftsman and sculptor. As is often the case with artists, his creativity seeped out in more than one genre. Under the influence of Roderick Walcott, Jakes developed his love for music and theater as well. In 1916, at the age of 23, he took to the stage in his first major festival performance with the St. Lucia Arts Guild, that of The Stranger in Africa Slingshot. He would go on to become an actor of repute, playing leading and supporting roles in several productions, local and regional. Among his most memorable are his portrayal of Mephist Mephistophilus in the tragedy of Dr. Faustus as Herod Antipas in Salome, Macaque in Sir Derek Walcott's Dream on Monkey Mountain, and the highlight of his acting career as Tusa Louverture in Walcott's celebrated world premiere of Haitian Earth. As a sculptor, he has created bronze busts, relief sculptures, and silhouettes of famous St. Lucians, and he has been commissioned by successive governments to produce national gifts of art to foreign heads of states, heads of government, and diplomats. He has received several awards, most of them from the MNC Fine Arts Awards, among them the Lifetime Achievement Award for his contribution to the performing arts in St. Lucia, and from the St. Lucia Arts Guild for his role as production manager for the annual theater festivals at home and at Carifesta in Guyana, 1972, and Cuba, 1979. Even following his retirement from the stage, Arthur Jacobs remains distinguished as the actor who holds the most awards in St. Lucia. For his lifetime distinguished contribution to the arts in St. Lucia, Arthur Leander Fidave Jacobs is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. Mrs. June Allison Kristen Frederick for long and meritorious service in the field of culture. Mrs. June Frederick can best be described as a cultural activist, a dancer, carnival reveler, avid pan player, theater producer, and lover of the arts. From an early age, she was immersed in the traditions and culture of her country by her father, the late Winville King, and in the art of costume making by her mother, the late Thelma King. She was a dancer from the age of seven, first with the extramural department under the management of the late Patricia Charles. She would later dance with the Monstrat Dance Theater Company, the Vivace Dance Company of St. Kitts Nevis, and the Antigua and Barbuda National Dance Company. She has also been a carnival reveler from the age of seven, which may have kindled her interest in the steel pan. 
She would eventually become the leader of the all-female Allegro Pan Groove. As administrative assistant at the St. Lucia National Trust, she initiated programs such as the Festival of Comedy, the Kids' Safari Summer, and the Christmas Folk Fiesta. As executive director of the Folk Research Center, she spearheaded many folk theater performances and other cultural productions. One of her most memorable projects then was the revival of the traditional masquerade, not only in St. Lucia, but in other Caribbean countries as well. Her love for the masquerade continues to this day with her Kitty Crew Project Mask Camp, which trains primary school students and molds theater arts classes of secondary schools and other community groups. She has served on several boards and committees, including chairing the Interim Management Committee for Culture, which created our National Cultural Policy, the Cultural Development Foundation, and the Jubilee Trust Fund Committee. Her passions are simple, the development of children in the arts and traditional masquerade. She believes that the arts provide invaluable discipline for life, and that learning about one's culture instills a sense of national pride that nothing else can teach. For her contribution to the development and promotion of our cultural heritage, Mrs. June Frederick is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold. <laughs> Mrs. Frederick could not be with us today and receiving on her behalf is Mr. Omari Frederick, her son. The St. Lucia Medal of Merit, Silver, Mr. Rupert Joseph Branford, for long and meritorious service in the field of sports. Mr. Rupert Joseph Branford, a proud product of the Marsha community, is the most outstanding St. Lucian sportsman of his generation. He was a cricketer, a footballer, and an athlete but it was in athletics that he made his mark on both the national and regional sporting landscape. As a middle distance runner from 1959 to 1966, he had no equal. For quite some time, he held St. Lucia's record for the 880 yards and the mile event. His record of 1.58 minutes in the 880 yards event remains unbroken to this day. He was crowned. He was crowned a Victor Ludorum at the Interschools Tournament in Grenada in 1960, and again at the Statehood Games in St. Lucia in 1966. On leaving the field of play, Mr. Branford did not fade away into retirement but continued to serve the sporting community in various capacities as a member of the executive of the St. Lucia Football Association, as president of the Castries Cricket Association, and as a national cricket selector, among others. He is a founding member of Shamrock Sports Club and president of the Vidbute Cultural Club. His publication, Outstanding Personalities of St. Lucia, which comments on the creme de la creme of St. Lucia's sporting, St. Lucia's sportsmen and sportswomen from the 1920s to the end of the 20th century, is a must read for anyone considering research in the cultural and social life of our country. Mr. Rupert Branford dedicated the better years of his life to St. Lucian sports, both on the field of play and in administration. It was all voluntary the chairs were his reward. We take this opportunity to honor this worthy son of the soil by conferring on him the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver.
I think there's just one slight thing missing. We were in the same form at St. Mary's first form. <laughs> and I think I did beat him <laughs> in a bun race. A bun race, eating the bun. That was an excellent light moment, Your Excellency, thank you. Our next recipient is Mrs. Rosemary Anastasia Etienne Paris. Mrs. Rosemary Etienne Paris is the founder of the Shamalayan Dancers, a dance troupe which has thrilled and charmed audiences locally, regionally, and internationally with its indigenous African calypso, reggae, folk, masquerade, and limbo dances. The establishment of the troupe was the fulfillment of a dream she nurtured since she began dancing with the Kashri's Comprehensive Secondary School Dancers, coordinated by the late Mrs. Teresa Hall. She would later dance with the National Dance Troupe and the Petit Saint Lucie Dance Troupe under the tutelage of Michael Francis, Carlton Ishmael, and Virgin the late Virginia Alexander. Mrs. Etienne Paris is also a carnival enthusiast to the point of forming her own band for juniors. That band would go on to win the title of Junior Carnival Band for 10 consecutive years. For her commitment to the arts in general and her contribution to the growth of the performing arts in St. Lucia, Mrs. Rosemary Etienne Paris is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver. Accepting on her behalf is Ms. Desiree Etienne. Mr. Innocent Amab, for long and meritorious service in the arts. <clears throat> Mr. Innocent Amab is an outstanding community leader and cultural activist. His passion for community development led him to establish the Wasson Sports and Cultural Club, which played a very active role in the development of the cultural and social landscape of the town of Soufre. Under his leadership, the Soufre Action Theater, the cultural wing of Wasin, was founded. It remains to this day the town's only theatrical and cultural organization. In the 1980s, the Sufra Action Theater was very active in the Folk Research Center's popular theater movement, Teyat Pepla, and in the 1990s, the group revived the masquerade tradition, Jab Dewo, which resulted in a blossoming of the arts and the performing arts in particular. Mr. Amab is a prominent personality in the community. He is an educator, a community leader, a leader in local government, a lover of the arts, and of our indigenous cultural forms. For his outstanding service and contribution to cultural development in the community of Sufre and at the national level, Mr. Innocent Amab is being awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver. And that concludes the first part of our award ceremony. Thank you very much, Mrs. Jolie. Ladies and gentlemen, let us put our hands together once again to congratulate all our awardees for this segment.
And at school, usually when we move from one subject to the next, we would ask the students to stand, hands up, out, in, down. I'm not going to ask you to do that. However, I will ask you to put your hands and join with me as we welcome again the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band for yet another musical interlude. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Very soothing and entertaining. Once again, let us put our hands together for the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band. And at this moment, I would like to call on Dr. Kathy Depardin, who will take us through the other half of our awards. The St. Lucia L'Epiton Medal, Gold. Miss Catherine Francis for long and meritorious service in the field of education and community service. <laughs> Ms. Catherine Francis, a retired teacher and school principal with 46 years experience, has been described as arguably the most celebrated volunteer to have served the Denry North Mabuya Valley community. Throughout her career as a teacher, she went beyond the call of duty to look after the educational, emotional, spiritual, 
and overall well-being of the students entrusted to her care. She found the time as well to volunteer her services and skills to many community-based organizations. Post-retirement, she continues to serve. She has been described as a permanent fixture in the Catholic community as she has been providing solid leadership for more than four decades. For her long and selfless service and contribution to community life and community development in the Mabuya Valley and Denry North communities, this well-respected stalwart and volunteer par excellence is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal Gold. Mr. Felix St. Rose. Mr. Felix St. Rose of Vifort has made a significant contribution to youth and sports development at the community and national level for more than 30 years. Football is his passion and coaching is the medium through which he helps transform lives, instill discipline, and nurture excellence in the young men and women with whom he interacts. Mr. St. Rose is an internationally trained FIFA certified football coach who believes that with the right support, training, and motivation, St. Lucian footballers can hold their own alongside any of their international peers. He therefore spares no effort to expose them beyond St. Lucian shores, even to the point of meeting the costs associated with that training and motivational experience. His dedication recently paid off when the St. Lucian national team in beach soccer, which he coached, earned gold at the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas in 2017. <laughs> For his significant contribution and selfless dedication to youth development through sports, Mr. Felix St. Rose is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, gold. Mr. Greenwich Hippolyte for long and meritorious service in the national welfare, sorry, for long and meritorious service in national welfare and community development. Mr. Greenwich Hippolyte was born in the village of Canneries and migrated to the United Kingdom in the 1960s but he has always regarded himself as an individual whose heart has two homes. Indeed, it was at his insistence that the Canneries UK Association was established to benefit both the village and the St. Lucian community on one hand, and the St. Lucian community in the UK on the other. He currently serves as the chairman of the Canneries UK Association as Secretary of the Unity of UK St. Lucian Associations and as Organizing Secretary of the Cosmopolitan Social Club, a charity which caters to Caribbean senior citizens in the UK. Among the charities that have benefited from the initiatives which he continues to spearhead are the Center for Adult Rehabilitation and Education Care, the St. Lucia Sickle Cell Society, the Women's Support Center, the Cerebral Palsy Association, the Viewfort Children's Society, the Clooney Associates, and the Diabetic and Hypertension Association. 
The greatest donation was, of course, the gift of an ambulance for the Canaries community. For his significant contribution to, the communi to community development and for his pioneering work in the establishment and ongoing administration of the Canaries and UK associations, Mr. Greenwich Hippolyte is being awarded the St. Lucia L'Epitor Medal Gold. Accepting on Mr. Hippolyte's behalf is Ms. Najla Bailey. The St. Lucia Le Pitor Medal Silver, Mr. Nicholas Rufus George. For long and meritorious service in the field of community development. Mr. Nicholson Rufus George has always been actively involved in the growth and development of the community of Peru. His love for that community where he spent much of his formative years has been unwavering. It was under his chairmanship of the Piero Development Committee that first a preschool and later the Piero Combined School were established. It was a long battle on both occasions, but Mr. George's steadfastness won the day. In 1987, the Piero Combined School welcomed its first students. His efforts were recognized 25 years later when the principal, staff, and the students presented him with an award for lobbying for and commencing the construction of the Piero Combined School. As chairperson of the development committee, he lobbied successfully for many other facilities for the community, including a playing field, street lamps, and bus shelters. Over the decades, he served his community in numerous capacities, in his church, the, as a member of the, the Southern Minibus Association, the Friendly Drivers Association, and the Viewfort North Constituency Council. For the many years of committed service to his community, Mr. Nicholson, Nicholson Rufus George, one of Piero's few gatekeepers, is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepitor Medal, Silver. Ms. Praxid Kade, for long and meritorious service to St. Lucia, tending to promote loyal public service in the arts. <laughs> Ms. Praxid Kade, more popularly known to the St. Lucian community as Patsy Kade, has been contributing to the entertainment sector for many years as an actor, dancer, and singer, first with the Rangers movement, and later with the Junior Chamber of Commerce, the JCs. By popular demand, she was a staple performer at the annual Carnival Queen Show pageant and built a strong and loyal fan base. She launched her professional singing career with the release of the album Love in Visual Stereo in 1968 in collaboration with the late Emile Ford. Her subsequent recordings, particularly in the spooch genre, became very popular not only in the Caribbean charts, but also in the United Kingdom, Canada, and Germany. 
perhaps it is safe to say that Patsy Cadet was St. Lucia's first female singer or recording artist, a distinction which earned her a Lifetime Achievement Award by a group of female singers of a more recent vintage sisterhood. For pioneering work in the development of the entertainment sector and in recognition of her contribution to the arts in St. Lucia, Ms. Praxid Cadet is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, Silver. Lucilla Flores Vidal Jules for long and meritorious community service. Ms. Lucilla Flores Vidal Jules is credited with reviving the defunct First St. Lucia Guide and Brownie Company at La Clary in Castries. Her commitment to the training and development of the young girls entrusted to her care was soon recognized and she was appointed the Northern District Commissioner. She is still very much involved in the guide movement and currently serves as president of Friends of Guiding in St. Lucia and Barbados. She was also very instrumental in the establishment of Friends of Victoria Hospital and served as president. For her long and meritorious service to guiding and other community organizations, both at the national and regional level, Ms. Lucilla Flores Vidal Jules is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal Silver. the St. Lucia Lepito Medal Bronze. Mr. Greenwich Giovanni Moses, for long and meritorious service in the field of music and community development. Mr. Greenwich Giovanni Moses, the administrator of the Children's Garden Center in Sufre, has been involved in the early childhood education sector within the Sufra community and nationally for over 30 years. His commitment to the sector is evident from the exuberance and passion he brings to his role as caregiver and a surrogate parent to the young ones in their formative years, and also from the type of creativity and innovation which is his hallmark. Mr. Moses is also a vibrant cultural activist and a practitioner, a community development enthusiast, and a gentleman with a natural nurturing personality. For his abiding interest in the development of his community, for his work with the youth, the church, and in the promotion of the arts, Mr. Moses is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal Bronze. Ms. Rosemary Monica Compton for long and meritorious community service.
Ms. Rosemary Monica Compton has been described as a highly committed soldier in God's army who has dedicated her life to serving humanity. She is particularly a strong champion for the young as well as the old, the poor and vulnerable, the marginalized and the differently abled. In this regard, she serves in various capacities in several organizations, clubs, and community groups. Among them, the Friends of the Mental Wellness Center, the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association, and the St. Lucia Diabetic and Hypertensive Association. Her own youth group, which she established in Chase Gardens and Carley more than 20 years ago, encourages spiritual growth and offers mentoring programs to the youth of that community. In 2007, Ms. Compton was St. Lucia's recipient of the first Caribbean International Bank Unsung Hero Award for the impact she has made in the lives of families in Castries and its environs. Among the beneficiaries of her prize money were the Upton Girls Garden Center, the Boys Training Center, the Anglican Infant School, and the St. Lucia Blind Welfare Association. For her outstanding service to the community, Ms. Rosemary Compton is being awarded the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, Bronze. Mr. Alan Joshua Hippolyte. For having performed long and meritorious service in the field of sports. For more than three decades, Mr. Alan Stryker Hippolyte has given unwavering support to sports development in St. Lucia especially in the area of track and field. He has served the St. Lucia Athletics Association long and well. As a technical official under the International Association of Ath Athletics Federation and a director of the St. Lucia Technical Officials Union, he has dedicated his efforts at the training of young athletes and sports administrators in the field of technical officiating. At the 37th Annual Sports Awards Ceremony, the Department of Youth Development and Sports recognized his significant contribution in the field of athletics and his long and meritorious public service. The nation again expresses its appreciation for his service by conferring on him the St. Lucia Lepito Medal, Bronze. National Service Cross. Deputy Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, for long and devoted service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. <laughs> Mr. Milton Daisy enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1985 and completed his police training at the Regional Police Training Center at Sewell Barbados. Prior to being a police officer, he was a trained teacher who just preferred the police profession. He has worked in most departments of the police force and spent most of his police career at the traffic department. In 2017, he was confirmed in the position of Deputy Commissioner of Police with responsibility for administration and has been appointed to act in the post of commissioner of police in the absence of the commissioner when he proceeded on vacation leave. Mr. Daisy has completed a certificate in paralegal studies, 
a Cambridge International Diploma in Management, and a master's degree in business administration. Apart from his academic qualifications, he has done most, if not all, courses opened to police officers during his tenure and has managed several mass crowd events. For 33 years of a loyal and devoted service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Deputy Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy is being awarded the National Service Cross. Special Reserve Sergeant 90, Eric Irvin Thompson. For long and devoted service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Sergeant Thompson has been a member of the Special Reserve Police since 1972. He was promoted to the rank of sergeant in 2011 with responsibility for administration. In addition to managing the office of the Special Reserve Police, he routinely patrols the city of Castries along with other officers. He performs his duty with a high level of professionalism and pride and does not allow his age to restrict his ability. Perhaps what Sergeant Thompson is best known for is his impeccable turnout, punctuality, and self-discipline. When he is not on duty as a Special Reserve Police Officer, he is engaged as an Environmental Health Officer with the Department of Environmental Health. For 46 years of dedicated, selfless service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Sergeant Eric Irvin Thompson is being awarded the National Service Cross. the National Service Medal. Assistant Superintendent Martin Adolphus Herbert for outstanding and meritorious service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. ASP Martin Herbert enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1986 and was assigned the number 221. Throughout his career, he worked at the Central Police Station, the Drug Unit, the Traffic Department, the Sufra Police Station, the Choiselle Police Station, and the Ancillary Police Station. He is presently attached to the Special Services Unit and serves as the Deputy Commander. ASP Herbert has a love for the military component of policing. He completed a diploma in small arms and towed artillery repairer in the United States Army in 1998, and since then has completed several other courses, including the RSS basic course, police leadership, managerial and supervisory skills, special forces operations planning, criminal and internal investigations, station supervision, court prosecutor, military officer, basic course, the police manager's role in combating terrorism, staff and command, the armor basic course, and battalion brigade staff operations course. He continues to perform his duties with the highest level of integrity, professionalism, and pride. He has strong leadership skills and has always assisted with the molding of his subordinates. 
the Royal St. Lucia Police Force is indebted to ASP Herbert for the sacrifices he has made during his tenure in the force. For 31 years of outstanding service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, ASP Martin Adolphus Herbert is being awarded the National Service Medal. Accepting, <laughs> accepting the award on Mr. Herbert's behalf is Deputy Commissioner Milton Daisy. Sergeant Prudence Robinson for outstanding and meritorious service in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. <laughs> Sergeant Prudence Robinson enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1986 and was assigned the number 328 upon completion of his training. He is currently in charge of the Criminal Records Office where he has worked for most of his policing years. He has completed several training programs, including the theory and practice of fingerprint identification, crime scene search, crime scene specialist, basic black and white photo processing, and major case management. He has continued to perform his duties with the highest level of integrity and professionalism despite his disability and is very capable of managing his workload and inspiring his subordinates. For 31 years of dedicated service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Sergeant Prudence Robinson is being awarded the National Service Medal. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Depardine. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let us put our hands together to congratulate all the awardees for this segment. And before we recognize our final set of awardees, I invite once again the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band to keep the entertainment going. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the members of the band.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. At this moment, I would like to call on Miss Alexander. Miss Alexander will take us through, and then Mrs. Fannis will do her thing. Let us put our hands together for Miss Alexander. His Excellency, the Governor General, has been pleased to award the Public Services Long Service Award in respect of Independence Day 2018 to the following persons. St. Lucia Public Service, Mr. Venantius Descartes, Mr. Paul Popo, St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mr. Rowan Michael Robert Sion, Mrs. Valencia Obeis Chalry, Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Assistant Commissioner of Police Frances Henry, Sergeant Walter Emanuel, St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority Ports Police, Sergeant Calvin Martin, Constable Lynn Veronica Norville, St. Lucia Fire and Emergency Services, Station Officer Vincent Atherley Williams, Subordinate Officer Francis Joseph, and the Bodley, the St. Lucia Prison Service, Bodley Correctional Facility, Assistant Director of Corrections, Wayne Chalry, and Assistant Director Rehabilitation, Alberta Joseph Felicien. Good afternoon once again. Both Dr. Depardin and myself will go through the final awards for the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Award. And we begin with the St. Lucia Public Service. Mr. Venantius Descartes. Mr. Venantius Descart entered the public service as a meteorological apprentice in 1979. He moved up the ranks within the public service to the positions of meteorological officer four, meteorologist one, and meteorologist three. He has served as director of meteorological services on five occasions in 1992, 2005, 2006, and 2014, and currently holds the position in the Department of Infrastructure, Ports, and Energy. For 39 years of unbroken and dedicated service to the public service, Mr. Venantius Descart is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. <laughs> Mr. Paul Popo. Mr. Paul Popo joined the public service as a supernumerary clerk in the Department of Justice, the Registry of the High Court in 1978. He was later promoted to the post of junior clerk, senior clerk, executive officer, senior executive officer, assistant registrar of lands, and deputy and registrar of lands until his retirement in 2016. For 40 years of unbroken and committed service to the public service, Mr. Paul Popo is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. St. Lucia Teaching Service, Mr. Rowan Michael Robert Sion. Mr. Rowan Sion began his teaching career in 1980 at the St. Mary's College as a physics teacher. After 18 months of study at the University of the West Indies, 
he returned to the college and was offered the position of vice principal. In 1999, he served as the acting principal of the Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School for one year, thereafter returning to the University of the West Indies to pursue a master's degree in education. Upon his return, he was appointed principal of the St. Mary's College, where he remained until his retirement in 2017. Mr. Sion's contribution to St. Lucia was not limited to education, but he has also been involved in the composing and the producing of Calypso at different levels. For his contribution to the arts and the culture, he was honored with a St. Lucia Medal of Merit Silver in 2010. For 37 years of dedicated service to the teaching profession, Mr. Rowan Michael Sion, Robert Sion <laughs> is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. Mrs. Valencia Obeus Shalry. <laughs> Mrs. Obeus Shalry began her teaching career in 1976 in Chuzel. After completing her teacher's training college program and a Bachelor of Education degree, she was appointed principal of the PI Combined School in 1998, where she remained for six years. In 2004, she was appointed Education Officer for, district, for Education District 8, where she served for 13 years until her retirement in 2017. She is a community activist and serves on the board of the Choiselle Cooperative Credit Union and the Choiselle Parish Council. For 41 years of unbroken and dedicated service to the education sector, Mrs. Valencia Obeus Shalry is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Assistant Police Commissioner Francis Henry. ASP Francis Henry has served the Royal St. Lucia Police Force with pride and distinction for the past 33 years, having joined in 1985. She now serves as Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for operations, having previously served as Acting Deputy Commissioner of Police with responsibility for operations and crime. Ms. Henry has served in various departments and stations, including the Criminal Investigations, Prosecution, Police Training School, the Marsha Police Station, the Southern Division, and as Assistant Commissioner of Police with responsibility for crime and intelligence, and thereafter, territorial policing. For 33 years of outstanding service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Assistant Commissioner of Police Francis Henry is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. Unfortunately, Ms. Henry is unable to be with us today and she will accept her award at another time. Sergeant 381, Walter Emanuel. Sergeant Walter Emanuel enlisted in the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1981. He served at the Central Police Station, Traffic Department, Denry Police Station, and the Special Services Unit. 
For the greater part of his policing career, he was attached to the Special Services Unit. He was promoted to the rank of Corporal in 2001, Sergeant in 2008, and acted in the rank of Inspector on a few occasions. In recognition of his dedication to duty and 36 years of service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Sergeant 381 Walter Emanuel is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. the St. Lucia Ports Police. Woman Port Police Constable 106, Lynn Veronica Norville. Constable Lynn Norville enlisted in the Port Police Constabulary in 1987 and was assigned to the Southern Division of the Port Police Department. She is presently attached to the Huonora International Airport and the Viewfort Seaport. She has over the years received training in civil aviation security, maritime security, law enforcement, and customer service. For 30 years of exceptional service to the Port Police, Woman Port Police Constable Lynn Veronica Novel is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. Port Police Sergeant Calvin Martin. Sergeant Calvin Martin joined the St. Lucia Air and Seaports family in 1990 shortly after resigning from the British Army. He was promoted to the rank of sergeant in 2005 and worked at both the Castries Seaport and the George F.L. Charles Airport as a shift and an administrative sergeant, respectively. He has acted in the rank of inspector on several occasions and performed creditably. For 28 years of service to the Port Police, Sergeant Calvin Martin is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. The St. Lucia Fire Service. Station Officer, Vincent Athley Williams. Mr. Vincent Williams joined the fire service in 1982. He was promoted to the rank of leading fireman in 1993, serving for a period of 11 years in that rank and then promoted to the rank of subordinate officer in 2006 and later station officer in 2015. Mr. Williams has worked at the Uranora Fire Station, the Sufre Fire Station, Viewfort Fire Station, Miku Fire Station, and he is presently attached to the fire service headquarters as the officer in charge of the Northern Division. For 36 years of committed and dedicated service to the fire service, Station Officer Vincent Williams is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal.
subordinate officer Francis Joseph. Mr. Francis Joseph enlisted in the St. Lucia Fire Service in 1982. He was promoted to the rank of leading fireman in 1993 and subordinate officer in 2000. On several occasions, he acted in the rank of station officer in charge of the Southern Division. Mr. Joseph has worked in all the fire stations in the Southern Division and is now the officer in charge of the Miku Fire Station. For 36 years of dedicated service, subordinate officer Francis Joseph has been awarded the St. Lucia Public Service Long Service Medal. the St. Lucia Prison Service. Assistant Director of Corrections, Wayne Shallery. <laughs> Mr. Wayne Shallery was appointed Assistant Director at the Bordelais Correctional Facility in charge of the Custodial Department in 2012 upon transfer from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. He enlisted into the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in 1997, subsequent to being a primary school teacher and freelance newspaper reporter. As a police officer, he was responsible for the intelligence and crime management sections of the Central Intelligence Unit. As the administrator of the custodial section of the Bordelais Correctional Facility, he enhanced the general care and protection of the inmate population and initiated the establishment of the induction center. On two occasions, he has acted as the interim administrator of the Bordelais Correctional Facility. For 21 years of service to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Bordelais Correctional Facility, Assistant Director of Corrections, Wayne Shallery is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. <laughs> Assistant Director of Rehabilitation, Alberta Joseph Felicia. <laughs> Mistress Alberta Joseph Felicia joined the prison service in 1998 as prison officer one. She was promoted to correctional officer three in 2005, inspector in 2014, and assistant director of rehabilitation in 2016. In 2017, she acted as Deputy Director of Corrections. For 20 years of dedicated service to the Bordelais Correctional Facility, Assistant Director Rehabilitation, Alberta Joseph Felicia, is being awarded the St. Lucia Public Services Long Service Medal. Thank you very much, Dr. Depredin and Mrs. Jo Mrs. Jolie Fannis. Ladies and gentlemen, our proud recipients for 2018. Join me as we put our hands together for a resounding round of applause one more time for all of our awardees this year. And of course, 
joining us in congratulating our very special guest. We now have the members of the Royal St. Lucia Police Band with the celebration piece. Let us welcome the members of the band.
Thank you very much. Like the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being such an attentive and wonderful audience. Of course, special thank you to the selection committee, special thank you to our invited guests, of course the recipients for this evening, and for all of you who graced us here this evening with your presence. At this moment, we I would like you now to stand for the national anthem. Once again, thank you for being here this evening.